I've done things in my life I had no business doing. I wasn't qualified, but I did them anyway. And I went places that I wasn't supposed to be, but I went anyway. And people would ask me all the time, how do you do that? You're just a normal soldier. I want you to go out into the world and step into that person that you're meant to be all the time. Not who you think you're supposed to be, not who your mom told you you should be, right? Not who TV says you're supposed to be, but you. Step into who you are. Some of life's biggest questions are answered with the simplest answers, but the lack of context makes it impossible to, to deploy it in your life. Because we're always looking for, there's got to be an answer, a big, fat, right in front of you answer. And most of the time, it's just simple things, right? My goodness, I'm still sweating from that past session. Sheila, where are you at? So, <laughs> my goodness, what the heck am I doing here in Mind Valley? This is incredible. Um, for those of you who don't know me, which is probably 99.9% .9 of you, my name's Stephen Kuhn, as he just said. I'm an American living in Europe, been living here for about 30 years, currently in Hungary. And I've, I've made a journey. Oh, who's that? Hungarians back there? All right. Jóisztet kibánok. There we go, huh? Look at that, a little bit of Hungarian for you there. I speak German too. Um, and so I, I've made my, my, my life journey about recovering from what I went through in the military, let's put it that way, right? And we, we won't get into that, but there's some things I want to talk about today uh, that, are, um, that led me to where I am right now. I've done things in my life I had no business doing. I wasn't qualified, but I did them anyway. And I went places that I wasn't supposed to be, but I went anyway. And people would ask me all the time, how do you just do things like make, be Mick Jagger's bodyguard or work for Andrea Bocelli or even help uh, with uh, Olivia Newton-John or politicians? How do you do that? You're just a normal soldier. You got out and who, who is this guy? And I, I could never explain it. So I'm like, uh, I just did it. I just walked up and said, hey, I'm your new bodyguard. And he said, okay, and that was it. They said, no, Stephen, you have to explain it. So that's what this journey is about, explaining what the heck I actually did. It's what we're going to talk about own, owning your presence, all right? And it's, it's something that um, you may misunderstand in the beginning, but as we move forward, you'll see uh, what I mean by this and why it's key, why it's key and why it's so important in life. So you're at a party, right? Maybe, maybe tonight you're at a party, you're standing there with some friends, having a great conversation, having some adult beverages, and you feel something. Something changes in the room, the energy changes. And you glance at the door and you see someone walking in and you felt them, but they didn't even say a word. Right? You, you watch them as they assess the room with purpose and walk towards where they're walking with absolute certainty. Maybe you were that person, right? Once or twice in your life. I'm sure you've all experienced that, right? You've all experienced someone walking into the room, you're like, who just came in, right? Have you experienced that before? Okay, great, all right. The Hungarians are going, yeah. <laughs> well, what if that was you in every room that you went into every time? How would that feel? What would that do for you? That's presence. That's presence. That's what I'm talking about. Is it even important? You're probably like, I don't care if people know if I come in the room. It isn't about that. It's a byproduct, and I'll, and I'll get to that in a second. Some of life's biggest questions are, are answered with the simplest answers, but the lack of context makes it impossible to, to deploy it in your life. Because we're always looking for, there's gotta be an answer, a big, fat, right in front of you answer, and most of the time it's just simple things, right? It's like if, someone, if you're in the office and someone says, call the technician, the copy machine doesn't work. And you go over and plug it into the wall and say, and now it works. Like often that's all it is, right? It's just those simple things. Can't see my notes. <laughs> anyway, let's just roll on with it, all right? My intention today is to show you a few concepts, simple concepts of how you can navigate the world, own your presence so that you can go out, shine your light and have an impact on the world. We're here for one reason and one reason only, all of us right here. Obviously to learn, but we're here to change, right? We're here to change, have an impact in the world. We want to see the world a better place. You wouldn't have taken the time and invested your time and money to come here otherwise. 
So I don't, I don't have to ask that question. I know that's what it's all about. I want you to go out into the world and step into that person that you're meant to be all the time. Not who you think you're supposed to be, not who your mom told you you should be, right? Not who TV says you're supposed to be, but you. Step into who you are. That's the beauty of it. So a few years ago, my co-author and I, Lane Ballone, he's not here, he lives in Colorado, uh, we were consulting and advising our clients. We're business advisors. We take successful business owners and turn them into no more grinding. We take them out of the grind, put them into their passion, allow their business to grow, and they make more money and more revenue without all the stress. And as we're doing this, we kept coming across the fact that our experiences were more important for solving their problems than the knowledge we had. So it wasn't my MBA or his college degree or anything. It was the experiences we had. But more importantly, it was how we approached life in general. And, and we're like, oh, man, that's, that's interesting. If, uh, if this works for these guys, then maybe we should make something out of it. So we started to research our lives and go back in time and say, how did we reach these goals? What happened when we didn't reach them? And how did we recover? And we came up with what ended up to being our book, Unleash Your Humble Alpha, right? And all of these things came into this book, and we call it, actually, the, the thesis of it all is the Humble Alpha operating system, right? The Humble Alpha operating system is broken down into five different core models that you can implement in your life in order to gain presence and become that epic leader person that you're meant to be. So the first one is HIT. They used to call me the HIT man because of that. I've been teaching HIT for 15 years. <clears throat> Corporate world, all over the world, in America, in Europe, Africa, all over. HIT. Honesty, integrity, and transparency. Honesty with yourself while you do say and think like you do. Transparency is how you step into the world with that honesty, and that's your ongoing reputation. Right? The byproduct of those two? Integrity. Integrity makes you authentic. Authenticity allows you to what? Dictate your own market value. That's how people get the big money. That's how people get the big money. They're authentic. Integrity. Every relationship that's healthy is built upon integrity. If you don't have integrity, you have leverage, so someone's going to lose. Integrity is where it's all at. So. Then we move on to creating space. Creating space, this is probably the most powerful one. Creating space is showing up wholly and fully for the person in front of you with no preconceived notions and no cookie cutter solutions. No expectation of a specific outcome at all. You're there for one thing and one thing only and that's to focus on the only thing that you can control. And what do you think that is? Your intention. What's your intention? I wanna add value. I wanna solve problems. That's why I'm here. I don't care about the outcome. I don't need to know about the outcome. It's the intention that matters. And guess what? I don't control the outcome anyway. So if I try to control the outcome, how's that energy going to feel between us? Right? So that's, that's creating space. I love that. And then there's life enterprise. You are the CEO of your life enterprise, just like a CEO of a business enterprise. You answer to two, two groups of people, the board of directors, right, and the share and stakeholders. And just like a CEO of a business enterprise, you have to make sure that that life enterprise is healthy, it's profitable, and that everyone's happy. So are you the CEO of your, are you treating your life like you're the CEO of your life enterprise? Something to think about. Then we have investing in relational capital. This is taking it a step further. How can I invest in my life enterprise, in the people in my life enterprise, and give them more? of what they're looking for. How can I work joint ventures, collaborations, working, working with people, helping them find what they want, personal or, or professional? That's the investment part. And it's the one thing, the one investment that you'll ever make where you're guaranteed to have a return. Law of reciprocity dictates it. I think everyone here can agree. Those four models lead to the last one. And the last one is the absolute equalizer in the world. And I can tell you right now, everyone in this room wants it. Everyone in this room wants it. Everybody in the world wants it. It's the one thing that equalizes everyone, and that's quality of life, what we call QOL, right? QOL is enjoying the moment no matter what the task. What do you think? You're having some QOL here? 
Or your mind valley? Yes. Up, Dan? All right, sounds good. It's, it's funny, I'm looking around here, I see people from all over that I actually know or met, and you know, here's one, and Dan, my buddy here, my, my partner Olga's down here. It's, it's pretty cool to be up here, be talking to you, to, to share in humbly what I've learned over these years, because everything that we wrote in the book, everything I'm talking about, it's, there's no theory. It's literally, I stumbled and fell and tripped and busted my head a million times to get to where I am right now, right? Which is relative, because where am I, right? You know what I mean? I'm right now, right here, I'm standing, and we're gonna talk about that in a second. Ay, ay, ay. So as mentioned, the topic for today is presence, and when you distill the humble alpha operating system down, we come up with three simple steps that emerged, right? Let's start with being present, right? Present, being present, what's that mean? Showing up wholly and fully in the moment. Right? You present right now? Who's present? Who's looking at their phone? There we go, all right, good. I'm glad you got, someone raised their hands. I'm like, shit, it was on their phone going, <laughs> see what the stocks are doing. Um, and then there's presence. Presence is a tangible energy that you emit when you're, what? Present, exactly. That's the energy you emit when you're present. So be present and you will have presence. What happens when most people walk into a party, into a room? They walk in there and they're alone, they pull out their phone and they're like sitting on the wall looking around because they're scared to be alone, right? No, you don't. Walk in, assess the room, look at everybody. See who's out there. Make a decision what you're going to do and go freaking do it. Absolute certainty. Absolute certainty. You know, we, we, when you're absolutely present in, in, in the moment, you rule. Simple. You really do. I'm right-handed. I keep walking to the right. So Sorry about you guys on the left. I'll stay over here for a little bit, yeah? So let's talk about what presence isn't. Right? What isn't present? It's not a title. It's not authority. It's not a position. And it can't be given to you. You have to decide you're going to be yourself all the time, everywhere. Oh, you see where I'm going with this? Right? Presence isn't something that you gain. It's something you decide now, here, in this very moment, to be present forevermore. And you do it relentlessly. Be yourself relentlessly. Own who you are relentlessly. As long as you're not hurting anyone <laughs> or yourself. Go, go be relentless. So how do you gain presence? You, you, might, you might be asking yourself, how do you actually accomplish such a thing, right? How do you gain presence? Well, like I said, there's three steps. So get, get your pens out. I see most of you already have your pens out, which is fantastic. The first one is this. Who am I? Who am I? And you're probably like, come on, here we go. Well, this is about doubling down on your identity. And if I ask anyone in here who you were, who are you? And I, I won't do that, but if I ask somebody who you were, you would say, I'm the CEO of this company, or I'm a, you know, a speaker, or I'm a coach, or I'm, actually, that's what you do. That's not who you are, right? All right, someone's following me here. I love it. I love, no, speak out loud, just sing it, right? I love it. It's time to double down on your identity and go into the world and, and just be who you really are and how you interact in that world is who you really are. Come on. I gotta ask you to do it. This world is filled with distractions and with the way it's supposed to be and you gotta do this and you gotta do that and if you don't wear this, you don't wear that. Right? Our TV, our media, everything is bombarding us. I don't watch TV. I don't do social media unless I have to, which I have to. <laughs> right? <laughs> Unfortunately. Right? I'm, I'm all about the moment being present, wherever I am in that moment. It's, it's difficult sometimes with modern technology, but we can do it. You're doing it right now. You're doing it right now. You could be home watching Netflix, right? But you're not. You, you invested in, in, in yourself to come here and do this. That, that's, why, that's why it's so important. So look, we all decide who we're becoming each day. And for many on this planet, we get told who we're supposed to be, like I said before, and what we should be, all from an early stage. So this step is critical, this step is critical for you to double down who you're deciding to be, who you are deciding to be, not who someone else is deciding you to be. Who are you deciding to be? Oh, I tell you what, get this crystal clear in your mind and your life will change. 
Because you won't care what, about, what people think, say, or do about you. You don't care. You know, it doesn't matter. That doesn't mean going out there being, oh, pfft, I don't care, you know, whatever. That's not it. Show up. Meet people where they are. Be yourself. If you show up and, and meet someone where they are, they will always accept you. And if you do it with in, in, integrity, you can say anything you want. Because that integrity will keep it keen. This is something that I, 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 I live by. You can tell I'm excited by it because this is actually how I live. And I'm getting, I'm getting to stand up here and just tell you how I live. I mean, if it was something that it was like I concocted, I went to, went to college to figure it out, to, to write this down and write this book, it, it would be cool. But this is just me talking about my life, and it's amazing. So thank you for allowing me to be here today to, uh, uh, to do this. And Vishen, he's, I know he's giving another speech right now, but uh, I'm honored that he would ask me. We, we met on an island in Croatia a couple times. Maybe some of you know Baby Bathwater. I know Dan's a member too. He's there as well. In our book, we walk people through what we call the two-word moniker. It's a two-word moniker identity, and it gives powerful and clear focus to, to every, every day in your life. My two-word moniker, right, is, well, maybe I should ask you, no, go ahead. My, uh, my two-word moniker is powerful connector. We distill it down. So you go through this whole process in our book, chapter one, because getting the identity down is where you, where you find out where you're headed. Right? So mine is a powerful connector. That's who I am everywhere I go. I know that's who I'm showing up as. And once you know this, you feel so clear and powerful that life becomes much easier to, to, to navigate, especially now in this crazy world, because you know where you're going, right? Certainty. Remember what I said? Certainty. Go there. Go. Right? Don't tell. Um, uh, no, I'm going there. Boom. I'm going. I'm moving. Move. Step it out. Right? As we say in the military. Step it out. Right? My mission as a powerful connector is to connect people who seek and those who wish to receive. Simple as that. And what does that look like? Well, that can be me bringing money to a deal. That can be me bringing two business people together. Maybe a, a, a manufacturer and a distributor. Just friends who need me to help them sort of create a new career. I was at, a, at an event in Budapest, was it two weeks ago, with the uh, Iraqi ambassador to, uh, to Hungary, he said, hey, come over for dinner. And I showed up, you know, just easy shorts and, you know, sort of shirt and everything, and I showed up, and there was like 10 other ambassadors there in suits and ties, right? <laughs> I'm like, thanks for the heads up, brother. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, I, I sat there, and I said, you know what, Pfft, this is who I am. It's cool. And you know what the funny thing was? is when you go around and introduce yourself, like, hello, I'm, and like, hello, I'm the ambassador to Egypt, I'm the ambassador to Greece, I'm the ambassador, and I'm like, I'm a business guy, I'm a business guy, I'm a business guy. That's all I said, what are you gonna say, you know? I'm not the ambassador to America, but nice to meet you. So, <laughs> and uh, the, Egypt, the Egyptian ambassador came to me and said, hey, do you help people start businesses? Because you're like a business guy, right? Like, it's, it's funny, because it's like business, everything's the same. I guess if you're a politician, I guess that's what happens, right? And I said, uh, yeah, I used to do that, but it's too much work. We take the successful business owners and make it even more successful. But why are you asking? He said, I've been doing this for 20 years, and I'm bored, and I want to start a business. And you look like someone that, I could, that could help me do that. Shorts, T-shirt, right? Like doofus, right? You know, standing there like, ooh, look at me, you know, kind of thing. And why, why would he come to me, this ambassador, some guy who was bigger than everybody else there, in a t-shirt, biceps bulging out, big legs and everything, you know, so I'm just like a big guy. Why would this guy in a nice sleek suit, Egypt, you know, the, the, the Egyptians, how elegant they look in suits, right? These politicians look amazing. Why would he come to me? Because I had presence. Because I owned my shit. I owned who I was. And it didn't matter if, if I liked it or didn't like it. That doesn't matter. I'm who I am. I owned it. So now this ambassador is coming to me as, a, as a, a future client so I can help him build his business. So he can get out and actually do something in his life that actually makes a difference. I'm not saying that ambassadors don't make a difference, but ambassadors don't make a difference. So, <laughs> Sorry if there's any ambassadors here. I know it's a cush job, man. It's a great job, right? You get to travel and have all this fun. It's awesome, yeah, I know, I get it. <laughs> I met this guy in Budapest. <clears throat> I was at, a, at an event, and uh, he, he walks up to me and he gives me his card. 
And I'm like, okay, I'm looking at his card, and, and it says, Peter Pilati, telephone number 0036XXX. And I looked at him and I said, what's with the X's? He goes, I only uh, give my telephone number to people who I want to speak to. And I was like, then why'd you give me the card? I'm like, what's, what's this all about? And he laughed and he said, well, what do you do? And I said, well, I'm here with a British corporation and I'm helping Olivia Newton-John, you know, the singer, the actress Olivia Newton-John from Greece, yeah? You're the one that I want, you know, that one. Too. And uh, <laughs> I said, I help her take her, I'm helping her take her business from America to Europe. And he turned like pale. He's like, what, Olivia Newton-John? Oh my God, she's like my childhood sweetheart. Is there any way I could meet her? Here's this guy who was just saying, I only give my number to people, you know. And as he's writing it, he's like, oh, shaking, like, oh, call me, you know. Yeah, so. <laughs> so he said, hey, are you going to invite her to Budapest? And I said, well, yeah, I will invite her to Budapest. So I did. And he said, let me organize the VIP. Let me organize everything, right? So he does, man. He crushes it. We pick her up at the door of the airplane. I didn't know you could do that. So the finger came out, connected to the door, the door opened up, and we were standing at the, at the front of the door. I felt like a pilot or something, right? She comes out, gets flowers, gets escorted out to a, a, a limousine, a police escort through the city of Budapest to get to the hotel. Like, how did he do this, right? He was on fire. He was loving this stuff. Local press, national press, a room, VIP, the whole works, right? And she loved it. She was like completely overwhelmed, like, wow, Steve, you really outdid yourself. And I was like, no, it was him, <laughs> right? And he was so happy. Why? Because now, he, we, we, we all went out to dinner, and he invited a bunch of his business friends and said, I'd like to introduce you all to Olivia Newton-John. Right? So he took, the, he took that moment and used it in order to, what? Up his game a little bit. And people are asking, well, what did you get out of it, Stephen? Well, I don't need anything out of it. Like I said, I have no expectations. Right? How does this happen to me over and over again? It's because I approach this and every other interaction by creating space. I have no expectations, right, of anything in return and no preconceived notions about the outcome. And you know, it was a beautiful friendship with Peter. He passed a few years ago suddenly, and it's a big loss in my life. That guy was amazing, amazing guy. Really, really changed my life. So the first step is to double down on who you are which leads us to our second step, let go. Everyone knows the book Letting Go, right? Hawkins, great book. A little bit of what I'm talking about there. Letting Go is a big concept. It's really become popular over the last couple of years, right? It's every, everyone see, reads the book, let go, let go, let go. I have a saying, you know, it's like, life breaks down into three things. Receive what's in front of you, decide what you're gonna do with it, and let everything else go. Simple as that. And now you can do that every minute of the day. Like, receive what I'm giving you right now, decide what you're gonna do with it, right? And then, let everything else go that doesn't serve you. I like what he said about this, but I think that's bullshit, so I'm gonna let that one go. Right? Or whatever it is. And if you go through life like that every single day, man, it's like, it's like taking the trash out, digging all, just getting rid of everything all the time. It's amazing. So if the first step to double down is who you, if the first step is to double down on who you are, the second step is to let go, but let go of what? Well, if the first step is who you are, the byproduct is automatically what? Who you are not. Look at this, man, I'm loving this, this is all right. This is, this is all right, thanks, brother. <sighs> Examples of what you can let go of, right? Past opinions of yourself, negative thoughts about yourself, what your mother said you should be and shouldn't be. They wanted you to be a doctor, and now you're a yoga teacher, right? Or the other way around, maybe. They wanted you to be a yoga teacher, now you're a doctor, right? You let go of all those things. And I get it. <clears throat> you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of things that we can let go of out there so that we can move on in our life. But let's talk about the biggest one, the biggest one of all. And uh, some of you are going to understand this, and some of you won't. Maybe you will. I don't know. What is that? Oh, my notes, there we go, thank you. What is that? Titles. Titles, right? right? I'm the CEO, I'm the managing director, I'm the owner, right? I'm the supreme allied commander. Whatever you wanna be, right? We gotta get rid of those things. 
because it's not your identity. It's not who you are. Sure, it explains what you do, but it's not who you are. And go out and ask somebody. You, you've seen it, right? The guy's like, <sighs> at the, you know, at the car rental counter, calendar, or counter. You know who I am? I'm the CEO of. Mm-mm. And people are like, okay, that's not who you are. That's what you do. So who are you? Right? And, and that's, we've gotten so accustomed to that. The titles are so important. People are hell bent and focusing on gaining a title so they could get the respect that they think they deserve that they forget that true respect and true presence comes from within, of owning who you are, owning your true identity. And if you don't know your identity, how are you going to own your presence? It's impossible. Is this clock counting down? There's a, so I got, I got 11 minutes left. Okay, I'm like, Jesus, like, it's taking a long time. All right. <laughs> To be clear, I'm not knocking titles at all. I'm not. They're there. There's an importance for those. But don't let it dictate who you are. Let it empower you and describe who you are in a powerful, powerful way. But don't, let, don't let it become your identity. Talking about letting go. <sighs> okay, this is a heavy story, so I'm going to sit down for this one. So back in 2007 and 2008, the economic crash happened, and I crashed too. And I ended up being homeless in Berlin, Germany, which is actually possible. And people are like, well, there's a social system there. Well, when you're self-employed and you have businesses and you lose everything, there is no social, so, social help for, for me except for uh, Social Security, which is 400 bucks a month, and I didn't want it. So I became homeless, and it was actually quite refreshing, to tell you the truth. And uh, at the same time, I was in a toxic relationship. And we're driving down the road, and she starts insulting me, as she always did. And I said, you know what? I'm done. Get out. Just get out of the car. She got out, and I hit, hit the gas, and I sped away directly into a speed trap from the German police. Like 100 meters. I mean, it, it, it was like, oh, there we go, right? I was like, oh. But I was completely distraught, completely upset. You gotta realize, I had lost everything. I was homeless, and here's the only thing in my life that I had some kind of hold, and she was insulting me. So I get out of the car, and they're like, you were going three times the speed limit, and I was crying, there's snot coming out of my nose, and I'm like this big guy, I was much bigger then. And they don't know what to do. And there's like a, a police officer here. One here is like six over there. And there's a paddy wagon and all this stuff. And I'm standing there crying. And uh, my girlfriend walks up. Because it was only 100 meters, right? <laughs> and she said, he's a war criminal. He murdered people. Arrest him. Yeah. And uh, I was like, you know what? Fuck this. Fuck this. I'm done. And I looked beside me, and it was slow motion. Everything happened in slow motion. There was a trainee police officer beside me. She was about that big. And I reached down. I saw her holster. I reached down, unsnapped it, and pulled her weapon out and put it to my head. And she said, do it. My girlfriend said, do it. They tackled her. The police officers tackled her. The female police officer took my hand, her hand on top of mine, and put it back down in her holster and spun towards me and said, this is not you, I know you. And that shocked me into reality. I was like, whoa, that, that, was, that was more shocking than a billy club to the head, right? It, it shocked me. Well, after that, I'm like, oh, I'm in deep shit now, man. Jesus, speeding, lost my car and my license, now I'm going to jail for grabbing a weapon. Well, German police officers aren't as harsh as you think they are. They understood, and they, heard, they saw what she said, so, 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 so they're like, dude, we get it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> sorry, man, but don't go back to her, that's for sure, right? So, <laughs> so they let me go home, but I didn't have a home. So I went to my apartment, which was rented out by a friend of mine, and I said, dude, I, I need the apartment for a couple minutes, please. He's like, all right, I'll give you an hour. So he takes off, and I'm sitting there. I'm going, what the heck did I just do? You know, what, what did I just do? Holy shit, I pulled a weapon. I'm, I'm at the end of my rope here. What is this? So I said, I guess the best thing for me to do is just to leave, leave this planet. So I went into my closet. I got out my military uniform, and I hung it up on the door, like with a hook, and I was fixing my ribbons, and I'm putting the uniform, making it nice and smooth, and I got a picture of myself in uniform, and I put it down there like that. And I'm looking at it, and I take a knife from the Marines called a K-bar, about that big, and it could split a hair three times. That's how sharp it is. And, I, and to that point, my only identity that I ever had was that, soldier. It's the only thing that I, I ever held, held on to. And so I put the knife to my neck, and I went to go, and there was like a knock on the door. Bam, bam, bam. 
I was like, oh my God, what a freaking loser. I can't even kill myself. You know? <laughs> you know, like, God, what? I opened the door. I'm like, what? And it was the female police officer. And she said, can I come in? And took my hand again and put the knife down on the counter and led me into my own living room. Well, you've been here before, you know? <laughs> I wasn't that drunk. And, uh, no, just kidding. And uh, she sat me down and said, Stephen, I know you. I was at one of your public book readings. You're an amazing man. You're going to change the world. Hang in there. And I was like, what the fuck? who is this? You know? She gets up, bussy bussy. You know, the Germans, a kiss on both cheeks, right? And she walked out the door. And I was like, did that just happen? <laughs> like, did, is that real? Did that just happen? I opened the door and she was gone, of course. I'm like, did that actually just happen? I said, I don't know, but I'm not safe right now. So I called my buddy in Austria. I said, dude, if you don't come get me right now, I'm not here tomorrow. I will not be here tomorrow. So he sent a plane ticket. I got on a plane, flew to Austria, and I ended up there at the monastery. Benedictine Monastery in Zeitenstetten in, in Austria. I spent a good month, almost eight, eight months there completely letting go of everything that I ever was, knew, understood. No cell phone, no laptop, no contact to the outside world. The only person who knew where I was was my mother. And after those eight months, I went back to Berlin. And you know what? People are like, hey, Steve, how's it going? I'm like, good. You didn't notice I was gone for eight months? I'm like, oh, really? How important are we? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. In the end, it's relatively simple. There we go. In the end, it's relatively simple. You need to go and do what you need to do to let go. You don't need to go to a monastery like I did, but your path is right in front of you. Grab it, run after it, make it happen. It's all yours. I promise you, right here, right now, you can start. Right? Having a supporting community like this really, really helps you go through these times in life uh, where you're having these, these, these issues. Right? So again, step two is about letting go, which leads us to our third and final step in this process. Why am I here? I gotta speed it up, I got five minutes, right? Jesus, I practiced this, this speech with Olga, my, my partner, we, did, we were done in like 20 minutes, right? Jesus, what the heck, I've been talking too much. Anyway, so, why am I here? Being able to answer the simple question, why am I here, right? It breaks it down into two, micro and macro, right? What's the macro? The macro is why am I here on this planet? What's my mission in life on this planet? The micro is, why am I here in this moment, right here, right now? Why am I here, right here, right now, in this very, very moment, being present? The micro or the macro, why am I here? Right, for instance, why am I here, right? Macro-wise, my macro, you don't know what my, my, my macro is? And I know my macro. I own my macro. I create radiant value to elevate others to a higher frequency. That's what I do, that's how I step into the world every single day when I go, go, go. You feeling the frequency? <laughs> All right, bring it. All right. Oh, I like that, snapping instead of clapping, that's funny. Yeah, <laughs> reminds me of Oprah or something. I don't know. <laughs> right? My micro right now on this stage is to impart a message to you about presence that will help you step into your own presence and own your true identity and become that person that you know that you're always supposed to be and that you know that you're capable of. There's nothing you can't do, I promise you. There is nothing out there, no title, no nothing, that will give you more presence and more power than your own identity. And you have it in you, and I know you have it in you. We all do. The power of attraction lies in the ability to be yourself and focus on what you actually control. And that's the intention. In this case, the intention of joy, love, and being yourself. You can control the outcome anyway, so just let go and have a good time and enjoy the moment. Be present, right? Be present. You can't control anything. Why bother? It's sort of like when you go to the club, right? Some of you will go to the club, you're like, I want to go have fun. The other guy, the other, I said guy, but anyway, women do this too, like, I want to go hook up, right? I want to go meet somebody. Maybe we'll go home tonight, right? What's the difference? One has an intention of joy and dancing. The other one has a specific outcome in mind. And what do we say about a specific outcome in mind? You don't control that. What happens when someone walks up to you and says, hey, baby, you know, immediately you feel like a different pressure. You feel like a different energy, right? But if I'm like, hey, you want to dance? Completely different. That's, that's, that's what I'm talking about, that presence. Don't worry about the outcome. You're, you're pushing, you're pressuring. People feel that. Whether it's conscious or not, they actually feel that. My goodness. Why is this important? 
Before we go to the action steps, Jesus in two minutes, uh, I want to emphasize why this is so important at our time in, this, in, in, in our history, why it's so important that you grasp this right, there, right here today. You see the world out there, hate, division, everybody kicking each other, fighting left, right, front, and center. Everybody, everybody's out there arguing. We don't need that shit, right? We need to radiate our light and presence to pave the way for others to step into their own light. We are the examples. And here's my favorite statement of this whole speech. You ready? We are the ones that we have been waiting for. Yes, give yourselves a round of applause for that one, right? Do you feel that? Do you feel that? Do you feel that? Do you feel how that feels? We are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the ones we've been waiting for. It's just incredible when you think about that, what this Mind Valley community is, what this is all about. It is incredible. Some places where you're going to go shine your light are going to be dark and uncomfortable, but now more than ever, the world is calling on you to be yourself wherever you go. No ifs, ands, or buts. It'll take courage, but I know you have it within you, and we'll support each other along the way. All right? Imperfect action steps. Jesus. I wrote a lot in this, didn't I? <laughs> take the imperfect action steps. Here we go, right? So the imperfect action you need to take to own your true presence. Challenge yourself to go to uncomfortable places right, with no title and relentlessly be yourself. That's the challenge. Can you do that? Yeah, can you do it, right? Right here, right now. You're here right now, that's right. It's, it's, challenge yourself to, to, to go into uncomfortable places. Yep, you go through the steps of what? Doubling down on your identity, letting go of what no longer serves you, and knowing why you were here. Those three things. Once you step into that place, it doesn't matter what. It doesn't matter what. As you go through this process, you'll automatically let go of the artificial identity that society created for you and that you've accepted, right? You'll notice life is giving you everything you need right, right at your feet. Your path is right in front of you. As, you know, your potency of presence is about being you no matter where you go. It's not tied to anything but you. You are truly more than enough, and you wield more presence than any title will ever give you. Will ever give you. Yeah? I freak out about this stuff. You know, I really love this stuff. <sighs> So let's, let's take some imperfect action right now, shall we? Yeah, yeah who's ready? Oh, oh. You about ready for this? All right, so who here always wanted to be a speaker but never got on stage? All right, all right, all right. You want to come up on stage? All right, let's do this. Get a microphone. Can we have a round of applause? That's on. So, please, inter I'm, I'm Stephen, and you are? My name's Natasha. Natasha, can, can, can you hear? Yeah. Is it working? There oh, we go. Say, okay. Natasha, you got about two minutes, you know, ex explain, ex introduce yourself, tell us what your macro is, why you're here on this planet, and your micro, why you're here today. Okay. My name's Natasha. I'm a hypnotherapist. My macro is I want to teach people how to self-heal, and my micro is I want to enjoy myself while doing it. Awesome. What's your mantra in life? What's your mantra in life? What's your mantra in life? What do you live by? Um, serve from a place of comfort. Look at this. She knows it, man. I love this. I love this. Give me a hug. Give me a hug. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. Here, here's a gift for being so courageous. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. That's what I'm talking about. Step into the uncomfortable and expand. Expand. Every time you step into somewhere you're uncomfortable, once you get comfortable, expand again. Get out of the comfort zone, man. Get out of the comfort zone. You don't need to be in that comfort zone. Ain't nothing, ain't, ain't not, nothing we need for that. So let's create some space right now. I actually wanted to do a QA, and a because in our book we discuss creating space. I told you about it before, right? Showing up wholly and fully for the person in front of you with no preconceived notions and no cookie cutter solutions with no expectation of an outcome. <laughs> right? <laughs> I've said it so many times, it's like second nature. I wanted to create some space right now, and I wanted you to create some space to come up with the best questions that you could ask that could serve as many people in this room, and my intention would be to answer those to the best of my knowledge. So we got about time for about two questions. So if anybody has a question, yes, ma'am. Yes, you want a mic? Yeah, it's true, I guess we should do the mic thing, right? Oh, good, wow, you're quick. Hi. Hi. First of all, thank you for your energy. Thank you. That's the first time I actually ask a question, but... Oh. Um, 
I want to share something and then ask a question from that. Okay. Okay. Uh, my intention to this experience was set before I came here. I didn't want to expect anything, and I've said it out loud to so many people. If some of the people I've talked with, I've said that. I'm not expecting anything. I just wanted to be. I wanted to be myself, to present myself as I am, and I just want a, testi test a testimony to what he was saying, that the more I did that, the more I attracted the right people, the more that I created the thing that, things that I wanted to create, and the more in my life that I showed up as who I was, the more the universe started to open up for me in ways I couldn't imagine. So, amen. Yes to Amen, sister, amen. I love that, I love that. And my question from here is, I am showing up as myself, the opportunities are showing up for me as well, but at the same time, where does the, where does the strategy to that vision, that end goal that I have come in? So yes, I will show up for myself. For, for example, right now, I know who I want to be, I want to be, but I don't know how I'm gonna get there. Yeah. So the plan is supposed to be there, but how can we have that with no expectation and while still showing up as who we are? I love it, I love it. Keep, keep the mic for a second. What you're talking about is an outcome, right? How do I get there, right? Well, we talked about letting go of the outcome, and you're like, well, how can you let go of the outcome? That's a mission, right? Well, of course you paint a picture of what you want in life, right? A lot of people set goals. I want a Bentley. I want this much money. I want this. I want that. But that's not what you want. You want the lifestyle of someone who can drive a Bentley. You want the lifestyle of someone who can afford a Bentley. You don't want a Bentley. You want that lifestyle. That's number one. Get that vision in your head, then let it go. Paint the picture, then let it go. Your subconscious knows it's there. Number two. You don't need to worry about the how when you're certain. And my, my young lady, you are certain, right? Certainty allows you to let go of the how you're going to do anything. How amazing is that? It's incredible. Incredible. Certainty. Read the book, honestly. Un un Unleash Your Humble Alpha. I'm, I, I think I make about 21 cents per book, so I'm not going to get rich. But grab the book. It's, it really changes lives. I would really appreciate it if, if, uh, if you guys would grab the book, and it's really going to help you move forward. We have five, those five models, five sets of action steps that will take you exactly where you need to go, and if not, you can, you can reach out to me, and, and I'll help you out, all right? I think that's all the time we got today, so I wish you all the best on your journey as you go into this world, right? And shine your light like never before, and like Gandhi says, be the change you want to see. But he's not talking about doing, is he? He's talking about being. Thank you so much.